Today we're here with my guest, John Kaufman, head men's basketball coach at Purdue Fort Wayne. Coach, thanks for being here today. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, you know, you know me well enough. You know I like to talk. I got ideas. Um, you and I love, you know, getting together and kind of connecting our two worlds. And you know, you know basketball really well, just you know, as a, the, the son of a coach, having played at, at Purdue Fort Wayne. Um, you know, coming to literally all of our games, it feels like, and 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 you know, connecting our worlds together as 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 you're you know a successful businessman. Well, th thank you. And, and the the genesis of this podcast was you know everything I learned in business was literally li literally through sports. You know, so let's uh let's let the listeners hear a little bit about who John Kaufman is. Where are you from, and how did you get to where you are today? Well, I'm in my 26th year of college coaching starting this fall. And, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, I love the relationships. That's probably what keeps me going every day. Um, I worked in finance after college, um, graduated from Washington Lee University in 1996. And uh, I had a degree in economics and, and started my career in finance um, out in San Francisco and spent two years doing that and kind of figured out, uh, you know, I, 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 I loved the people part of the business, um, didn't necessarily love the business. I was blessed with uh, our, our company was bought out. Uh, LGT Asset Management was, was bought out by Invesco and had an opportunity to kind of get a, uh, a transition in life really, really early um, to where I got a severance package, took off to Alaska for two months with my mountain bike, my fly rod, my skis, and, 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 and the guy who sat in the cubicle next to me. Um, and, and, and we kind of, you know, enjoyed life for about two months, realized, Hey, we got to figure out our next plan. And, and that's when I had always kind of dreamed of being a high school coach after my high school coach, who really was next to my father, the most influential person in my life. And so put out, you know, 250 resumes out there, ended up as a division three assistant, um, where I was making, I, I dropped to four digits. I don't know if anybody ever talks about making four digits, five thousand dollars of my salary, and I worked for Bob Johnson, um, whose dad was chief of staff of the Army during Vietnam. I mean, I got a PhD in leadership from him. He went to Army West Point, um, and then from that point on, just had tremendous mentors. I mean, my high school coach, elite teacher, details Bob Johnson taught our pace and space, which I now use now. But you know, he was sort of a Renaissance man, uh, coaching in Southwest Virginia. Um, and you know, he, he brought in the life skills, which is kind of paid forward for me with our program here. And then went on to work at, at college of Charleston for John Cress, who dominated his organization was all uh, ultra successful just year after year after year because of how organized he was. And then worked for the youngest coach in division one, Derek Waugh, who had relentless passion, then worked at Colgate. Um, under Emmett Davis and just a, a phenomenal work ethic and then finished out here as an assistant coach under, uh, coach under Tony Jassick, who, you know, really taught me appreciation. Um, I, our staff had gotten letting go at Colgate. Um, and, you know, here I was, I had a, my, my wife was also a college coach. We had a two-year-old son and, and a, and a young, uh, uh, a daughter on the way. And, and he gave me a second chance and, and I think that's where I really, really inspire myself. Hey, treat every job like it's a job you want to be in the rest of your life. And then things are going to be successful after that. And three years later, after being let go on a coaching staff for Colgate, I'm a division one head coach, one of 360 plus, And we've had great success because of that mantra I keep in my head. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so a little bit about the podcast, we're, we're teaching people, you know, a little behind the scenes of our real estate business. I'll, I'll never forget when you and Tracy came to town to, to look for homes and, uh, you know, there, there, we went and looked and there wasn't much that, you know, really piqued your interest. And then all of a sudden there was a home and they're having a, I think it was a birthday party for some kid or something. And we told them like, we're coming over to the birthday party. We need to find a home or you're in town this weekend. We went over to the birthday party. I'm, I'm yucking it up with the, with the owners and, and you and Tracy walking through the home. We left and we're like, okay, this is the one let's go get it. So. Well, I think we, uh, I think we had 30, we, we looked at 32 houses in one day Yeah, and we told you, Hey, we're going to buy a house today. Yep. Ab you know, absolutely. We're moving the family. And, and a lot of them, you know, Tracy rolled in and, and you know, she knew exactly what you want. I think that's, Kind of what's made us go is is uh, uh, my wife is very very uh, supportive and organized with with, with the life 
Um, so ha- having partners in the game really helped. Too. Well, and that, that's one of the reasons, <clears throat> you know, one of the reasons that I got into real estate was because, you know, being the, the son of a coach, you know, coach's kid, you know, we moved around a lot. And so, you know, our, our mission is to help people save time, reduce their stress and help them keep as much money in their pocket. And when you're moving across the country, you don't know anybody, new staff, there's a lot of stress involved. So you guys, you guys did a great job and we'll, we'll get off the real estate topic here in a second, but I, I want to talk about, you know, mastering the fundamentals falling in love with practice and winning at the game of life. And there, I remember uh, a couple of memories before we get into our conversation today. I remember uh, during COVID, I had some, some real estate buddies all across the, the country and we're like, you know, we need a little locker room talk from a coach. And, and you got on and, you know, got on a Zoom call and, and we had a little locker room talk and that was fantastic. But um, I want to give you a compliment right now. When you came to Fort Wayne, I, I believe I was in the top 10 all time in multiple categories. Okay, scoring, assists, free throws, whatever. And you've made it your mission to knock me out of almost and probably <laughs> all of those categories. And it's not because of how good I was. It's because you have taken the program from what was a commuter campus, division two, then division one, you know, and guys were in the state four years and, and you are you are now at the point of there is some legitimate national success you guys are having in some respect. So Let's talk about, you know, how mastering the fundamentals. First of all, what are the fundamentals when it comes to coaching? You coach fundamentals in your athletes, the, the fundamentals of basketball you coach, but as a coach, what are the fundamentals that you and your staff focus on? Well, you know, when, when you kind of sent me some notes to kind of start getting my mind working, I mean, you had the recruiting, the coaching and so forth in there. And, you know, where, where I kind of see it, that obviously those are clearly part of our fundamentals, but um, you know, the, the, Things that inspire me, like like what what goes through my head with everything I do with our fundamentals are, first off, be intentional. Okay, differentiate ourselves when I put together our fundamentals. All right, uh, invest in relationships versus being transactional. Um, I think that's why you and I have connected so well. Um, when I came in in the town, when we bought the house, and all of a sudden, you know, you're connecting me with people in the community, but even more important at that time, it was connecting me with resources to manage our home um, from, you know, hey, you had a guy for everything. I love having a guy, you know, but like you had, you know, we, we, we had a flood in our house within that first year and you had a guy I call you, you know, late in the evening and you're like, all right, call this guy. He'll be over there in 20 minutes. Um, and so I, I think that's because you've really invested in relationships. Um, and then, you know, I've tried to create a platform for fun. Um, we've tried to promote dreams with our team. Um, and most importantly, you know, and I said this in my introduction, um, I, I, I've come in every day and tried to make this the place I want to be the rest of my life. Now, there may be other opportunities that may take me in another direction. Now, I've been here 12 years um, and, 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 and I'm, I'm excited. You know, I got a contract through my, my son and grad or my daughter who graduates in 2030. Um, so like, that's exciting, but I think because I do that, um, I'm not worried about getting the next job. I'm worried about the job I'm in. And like, I'll give you a great example. When I, when I walk from, I, I don't park you know, in the closest spot to, to miles. So I, I, I park, I like to get the exercise. I park, you know, way across campus in some shaded area, same spot every day. And that walk, I get to have a walk like I'm on an official visit or an unofficial visit, like I'm pulling up to campus. And every day it's an unofficial visit for somebody. You know, they're coming on, they're deciding, am I going to go to Purdue Fort Wayne after I see campus or not? And most people um, are making their decision in the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes of a visit and the visual. And so in that walk, I'm looking at from their perspective and I'm, I pick up trash uh, and, and it's become almost this obsession. Um, but it's a little bit of this pay it forward. Hey, if the head men's basketball coach, you know, is picking up trash, well, guess what? I, I'm either not going to drop trash or I'm going to help pick it up. And it just creates this mindset. Also for me, um, I don't know, have you ever seen that? Um, it's a, it's a YouTube. Um, it's, it's Admiral William McC- uh, McRaven. Texas graduation. And it talks about the speech of make your bed. Oh yeah. Have you seen? Oh yeah. That? And, and that's part of our, we have a whole video series and an article series, podcast series we do with our team as we're building our culture every summer. Um, but that piece talks about make your bed. You know, you can change your life. You got to start your details in the morning. And that's kind of, yes, yes, I do make my bed. I, I, I listen to the Admiral, 
Um, but then that's sort of, hey, as I'm getting started in the day, um, how, how do I go about that? that so that's, that's fantastic. Kind of inspired no, that's, that's fantastic. So you're almost talking about the fundamentals of your core values, like your core belief system, right? And that's, that's fundamental, which, which is fantastic. So being intentional, you know, making your bed, picking up the trash, you know, I love, I love your mindset of, you know, this is the job I'm gonna have the rest of my life. And, and if it's not, if, that, if that's not the case, so be it. I think in business, what happens a lot of times, you know, for the listeners is, you know, you're, you start off, you have clients or you have, you know, customers, and you're always thinking about, well, I want to get into, you know, more business. I want, I want more clients. I want bigger clients. I want, you know, I want to create more revenues for my company. And, and a lot of times I think being present in the moment, you miss out on some amazing conversations with the relationships you do have, because I believe, you know, everything you need is underneath your feet and, and the customers, the clients, the players, the, the team you have, you know, if you're present, they're going to take you wherever your dreams are. I mean, if you're teaching your guys about dreams and goals, you know, relationships win. And that's what this podcast is all about. So that's fantastic about those core values. I know um, you're doing a lot to teach the young men. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep going with this. Let's talk about practice. Well, let me yeah, go yeah keep and, going. And, and, yeah. And so, so that's, that's what bases those. And so, you know, when you asked me, Hey, what, what are your fundamentals? It, it was really good because I think, and I told you why I was so excited to do the podcast with you is it, it's forced reflection. Mm. You know, so many times you just ca get caught in the grind of the day and then you got, you know, you got kids, you got their activities and, and, and you're constantly servicing people. Um, and sometimes you don't get to be as intentional. So it helps you kind of go back and who you are. Um, but I, 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 as I listed mine, it was, it was leadership, sort of how I inspire and lead our organization, uh, how I've created the lifestyle, recruiting, coaching, fundraising, which goes into NIL, but that's really helped me to pivot our program. And then, and then fundraising, um, which is sort of like mm. fundraising. But, you know, as you talk about leadership and, and, and how I've inspired them as my first fundamental, like, and we talk core values. Those are other things as I develop our program, but our core values, I spend a ton of time. This is where, you know, my wife is a 20 year veteran of coaching. Um, she was a head coach earlier than me. So I tried to create our core values on my own. But like, I literally, I mean, we're around, I couldn't beat her words. Um, as I, and I, I'm talking, I talked to Shaka Smart. I, 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 I went to Izzo. I went all these people and researched. And so positive mindset, mutual respect, interdependence and pride. And I, I could spend hours talking about that, but I do think coaching through core values is very valuable. Um, you know, I try not to have the coach talk with our players constantly. Like, for example, if a guy's late for class, you know, I can talk about why you need to be on time for class. All right. And you can go and go. And go. But, but at the end of the day, if you, you know, he gets he shuts off, you become Charlie Brown's teacher, you know, wah, 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 wah. And so you're better off coaching through the core values, you know, like mutual respect. You know, you just valued your time more than the professor and your peers in the class. You talk about pride in the program. You know, you may be an A plus student and you may say, hey, coach, God, I, I, I like I got an A in that class. Like, I don't even need to go to class. Well, you know, uh, Joe Smith on the team, like C plus is the best he can do. Like, that's who he is. Like, he needs to have, you know, that professor's got to say, man, like, Men's basketball players, they're, 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 they're really good students and uh, in terms of they're committed to this. Sure. Um, the other piece, great story. And this goes back to our yogurt place that you set me up with. Okay. And this is where core values are critical as you run an organization. So Tommy was maybe three when you gave me that yo-yos call where I could go get free, uh, uh, with one, one, one of your, uh, our friends now. Um, I could get free yo's. Well, back up a second and. I had a mantra in my family, which was Kaufman's try everything, thinking at dinner table, okay, green, green beans, all stuff. Eventually, you're going to like this. So I'd always try Kaufman's try everything. Well, then we go to the yoga shop. And this is where I realized you can't coach through rules, okay? We go to the yoga shop. Tommy's three, and he's testing, 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 okay? And he's going through, and I said, Tommy, that, that's enough, you know? And it was free, so I was trying to be – Mutual respect, and, and he's trying all these things, being rude, holding up the line. And, and Tommy, at four years old, three or four years old, turns to me, and I had a rule, Kaufman's try to see his dad, Kaufman's try everything. And I recognize at that stage, when I become a head coach, like, can't coach rules. If a four-year-old can outsmart a rule, soak in, like, adults and young adults, like, you got to figure out 
how the core values lead you in there. So you're fully believing. Wow. Um, That's a great story, so, by the way. You know, the, the, the other part of like sort of leadership inspiring them. And I mean, you were there, you were at our Cleveland state game, right? Yes. The one, the triple overtime yep. game, right? Yep. Which could, you know, arguably be one of the greatest games in, in, in our school's history. Um, and, and we go on to win the, you know, ties that, well, we, we, we share a title, uh, Horizon League title year two with Cleveland State. And it gets posted all over Scott Ben Pelt, um, that night. And it was my worst moment as a leader and my greatest moment. As a leader, I, 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 I know where the story is going, but I want I want the listeners to hear what you're about to say, because I think a lot of times we just get caught up in our successes. And and I think a lot of times, you know, we, we want to, you know, I want to grow my business 10 percent next year and I should never have a losing season. And I want you to tell the story because I think I know where you're going here, because it's a fantastic story on leadership. So right there, I keep it. I keep it right there on my. Wow. Uh, that's, on, that's, on, a, that's, on my a, that's a picture of a timeout for, for those that aren't those that aren't watching the podcast, but that's a picture of a timeout. All right, tell the story. So score in that picture, 71, 71. Um, I don't use my timeouts uh, very often. I like, our, I teach our guys how to play, teach them how to play the game. We're coming down the stretch. We're down to uh, with less than 30 seconds. And, you know, to make a long story short, uh, we end up with three timeouts within the next 24 seconds. Um, you know, my, my small calling guard uses a timeout on his own, gets caught in the short corner. Um, we go to a baseline out of bounds after that, and uh, they put a big man over the top of the ball. We can't get the ball in. Uh, I'm sorry, they call a timeout because we've now played each other, I think, eight times in two years because of COVID flex and whatnot. So this is a real rivalry, <laughs> eight times in two years. All right, so then so then uh, uh, they call a timeout to set their D. Then we call a timeout. We can't get the ball. And so it's three timeouts. And, and with media timeouts and whatnot, I mean, you're talking about it's, it felt like 30 minutes. Well, prior to that, I had told my assistants and I try to communicate with them. So we're all on the same page. Hey, I'll set my D, meaning I'm going to call a timeout after we score the ball, tie score, um, and set your D, meaning that call a timeout. Don't let them get transition. We set our D. We talk to them. Tie ball game. How do we close this thing out? How do we get a stop? Well, it happens, 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 all this delay. Um, our, our bench maybe doesn't operate the right way in terms of all the reminders, guys and things, but also ultimately it falls on the back of me. Like I got no time and score and situation. And sure enough, I do the worst thing I could possibly do in my college career. I call a timeout and we're out of timeouts wow. after we score the ball with six seconds left. And in that picture, I dropped my head. That was a picture. It's, it's, you know, it's on ESPN. It gets blasted all over Scott Van Pelt. My head's down, um, and and I just lost the game because they're going to get two shots, ball out of bounds, six seconds left, probably an impossible feat moving forward. And so this is the moment, though. This is where I know we've built culture and we're doing the right thing with our acts of caring and, and that I look in the mirror when we have failure um, because not one of our players pointed fingers. I had five guys in that huddle all reach over and touch me. And every one of them said, coach, next play, next play, next play. And had these physical days. And we talk a lot about, you know, touches, clats, dance in our program of raising the level of the energy. Um, and it was, and I didn't recognize it in the moment. It was after I watched it 30 times on Scott Van Pelt um, because, man, I was down. And finally, then here's my other picture, Damien, our little point guard, all right, he uh he reached over there and rubs my head and says, Coach, I'll fix it. Well, that's gonna be impossible. Well, they they miss one of the one on ones, so they hit one. Then they we foul, so now it's down to four seconds. Baseline out of bounds. We we have all of our scripts all set up. He gets a circle out that runs, nails a three, and sure enough, little dude, five eight dude fixes it. A, a um, running, a running, running out of balance, out of balance three. And you go to overtime, and go to overtime, and then we win it in triple. So overtime. he didn't. So he didn't and fix it. So he didn't fix it there, but he made it right. And then, and then you still had to play more overtime. Um, it was, uh, it, it, it was an awesome, awesome moment. And uh, and and I had, I had probably twenty coaches hit me with texts that night or the next morning who watched it, wow. um, who said the same thing, and said, "Man, like 
I saw, I know what you did. Like, God, yeah, that, that, I mean, I know how you probably felt. Um, but I can tell you're building special in that locker room mm. because of, how they operate. Uh, I want to, I want to say something that I've got a list of questions here that I think the listeners would be really, really, uh, important for, for you to answer. But I, I think this story is, is actually kind of sums up all of the questions in one, you know, the work you've put into building the culture of your team got you through that moment. You know, the guys touching you, rubbing your head, you know, got you through that moment. I think every person listening can, can, testify that paid as an office assistant, you know, everybody starts at the bottom. I was paid as an office assistant. I had one good month. I think I sold three homes, you know, back then I had, I was broke, had no money and three homes was amazing. And I've never seen that much money before. And at that moment, the guy I was working for, he was, he was paying me to be his office assistant. And I had a great month and he came to me and he says, Brad, I'm no longer going to pay you anymore. You do not work for me any longer. And matter of fact, now you owe me rent for the space you're taking up. And it was a moment of adversity. And I look back, coach, I look back at that moment as one of those things, kind of like your timeout, like, you know, this could be, this could be the end of my career. Like I don't have any money. And now this guy took away my salary, which wasn't much. And now I have to pay him rent. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but, but I'm not where I am today. If that moment doesn't happen, you know, and I think, I think everybody who's listening can experience or has an experience very similar to that. <laughs> that is, that's fantastic. And, uh, what a big shot. Yeah, right. And and I think that's, you know, that kind of sums up. Yeah. Um, you know, the next fundamental um, that I thought was a little bit unique uh, was kind of creating the lifestyle. Um, and, and that's how we operate. That's, you know, I think organization is, is critical. Um, and then communicating your organization. And I think that's what creates the synergy we have in, in, in our, you know, in our, in our locker room, in our staffing i mean you know, we have seven i mean i got seven assistant coaches um between strength coach and trainer and, 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 and mental performance coach and and i think 16 years as being an assistant um you know i, I recognized what was happening behind the scenes and when i became a head coach and i and, and i knew in our in our spot as a you know a, a, a growing mid-major um, that was underfunded. And, and actually, this is my, my, my agent told me that this, this last year, which is, I don't know, good, good or bad, but uh, over the last decade, uh, our program has won more games than any Division One program in the country per university dollar spent on it. And so the efficiency. So, yeah. uh, I, you know, and, and, and I look back at that and, and how do you do that with by being intentional. And so, you know, I've, I've created a game plan, like models um, for everything, all written out and typed out and organized and constantly looking to reevaluate and pivot. But, but I'll give you a, a great example from my models that, that help my other young assistants. Cause I, you know, where, where our budget sit is I'm hiring young assistants, developing them, and then, you know, pushing them out the door to become head coaches or, or move to power fives or whatnot. Um, but great example is as an assistant, um, with recruiting, how many times did my, my head coach would say, all right, turn to our staff and say, Hey, uh, talk to me about who you're recruiting. Well, I'd hear other assistant coaches on our staff and they'd list out these names and go through their recruiting. And I knew like they weren't necessarily recruiting them, you know, maybe in their mind they were, but they're more of a recruiting service. They were talking to their high school coach. They were talking about them. They'd watch the video, but recruiting them like like you got to be talking to the family every week you know texting calling and you know eight or nine things go into recruiting somebody and so i create definitions because that's where there's a lack of communication in the office space and so when i became a head coach i said all right we're gonna have our when we have a recruiting meeting we're gonna have this language that i define so there's no miscommunication so you know you have an evaluation meaning that you've seen somebody okay watch them on video um, gotten a tip on them, you're someone following, meaning that you started the recruiting process. Maybe you called the high school coach, you called the kid one time. And then the final piece is recruiting them, meaning that you're doing these, and we, we change up what it is, but these eight things every week. Okay. And we've defined, this is what it takes to recruit. And so everybody's got their eight guys are recruiting and you got your staff four and they got, 
you know, 36 guys and whatnot. And then you're going to lose a guy you're recruiting. You add one that was following in recruiting. But that way I know, and now we're communicating. And so if you say you're recruiting somebody, you're doing these eight things every week. And so I think that piece of communication has really been, been, you know, been important. To us. I think, I think, um, I think communication is, uh, you either win or lose with communication, man. That's where it starts. And you talk about recruiting, you know, in business. Um, I used to work at a place uh, a while back. There was a fantastic place to work, but they put a cap on the number of people we could have on our team. And so it, it allowed me to get stuck in not recruiting. And so what happens when you stop recruiting? Well, you're not bringing any new fresh water into the, into the organization. So, you know, those listening, you know, if, if you're running a business and, and you need to hire some new talent, what I just heard you say is you got to put the full court press on recruiting. You got to, you got to communicate, you got to over communicate and you got to really build relationships. If I want somebody new on my real estate team, if you want somebody new in your business, you, you have to, you have to break down what's the fundamental and, and it's communication. And then it's just going all in and building a relationship because too many times, you know, you send a message on social media or you send them a note or you call them. But I, I, what I'm hearing from you is like, how relentless are you in your pursuit of, of letting somebody know, I want you in our program. I want you in our company or in our business. No, no doubt. And, and then that, that goes even, even, even further when, you know, when we're talking about the organization, it takes time. To, to get yourself organized with that stuff. Um, and, and this probably falls more into your next question. You're going to, you're going to talk to me about, about falling in love with the job, but, but, you know, like pr my practice planning. So with, with our practice and, and, and I sit back and I, I take a little bit more of a football approach in terms of, I like to quality control, watch everybody else doing their things, but I'll, I'll spend an hour, hour and a half planning a practice, a two hour practice. And then I'll call our staff in. And I have it broken down and, and, and they all have their tasks and I'm talking, it's in, it's in, you know, whatever, eight font uh, of arrow with every detail is scripted up there. And then we discuss, we spend 45 minutes to an hour talking about practice. So now we've spent almost two hours between me and our staff preparing for that two hours. We're going to be on the practice court. Um, and so I think that intentional work allows them to really know what to do teach so we're all on the same page and then i'm empowering them to coach like if i've been on staffs where the head coach did all the coaching the other guy sit on the side and clap and they're they're bored and that boredom kind of leaks out into everything else where they're not on the same page or somebody asks them a question they don't know how to answer that and they sort of, you start getting undermined so being on the same page and that's sort of the lifestyle of, I want, of how we operate. I want, to, I want to go back to practice for a second because you know in our definition of practice it's all the unseen things that you have to do so so you you actually have practice as part of your you know jo job description it's part of what the guys do like you just know it's practice but what i heard you say and i think i think many people if they were honest with themselves would say that they don't practice they don't fall in love with the practice of being successful in their job. So I, I want to role play a little bit. So let's say, let's say in my job, I know I have to reach out to 10 past clients every single day or write five personal notes every single day. Like that's the most important part of my day. What you just said is you spend about the same amount of time preparing for practice as what you are in practice. So if you're giving advice to a business owner out there who, you know, we're recording this on a Wednesday. What you would have done is you would say, okay, on Tuesday, I'm going to spend X amount of time preparing for my Wednesday. So, so talk to me a little bit about what that preparation of practice looks like and, and how, can, how can listeners be so detailed and thorough in making sure that the next day that they go into or the next meeting that they go into is that important? So, so there, there's, there's a sample right there. And, and, and you probably can't read it, but, but, but you see... I mean, it's a full page of notes mm -hmm. that I've, I've prepared. Now, it's a lot of cut and paste, and I'm using past practices. I, I pull up on my screen, you know, last year's and then and, and so forth. So I, I, I get to use history. But you're, but you're um, being intentional back to one of your core values. I'm being intentional. And then I, as I go through practice, I keep a pen in my pocket. And so I'm constantly writing notes about practice, about, okay, hey, let me make this small adjustment for tomorrow, or hey, I saw this with the team. And then I add those notes onto my digital practice plan um, so that when I see those next year and I see those the next day. Um, so I'm using that information to kind of pay it forward. 
Um, and so, you know, I got everybody set up with all of our, our teaching. And then, you know, if there's a drill in there, it have the explanation of each drill and how it's taught. So if one of my coaches and I try to break it up, so each coach is, is introducing a new team drill. And so I get to kind of watch and sit back and then they get to command the crowd because as I'm developing coaches, like it's important to be able to command the crowd. And so I'm giving them these opportunities, yet I'm watching critique. I'm ready to step in. Maybe I adjust. I make some notes and then um, help them for that. Also, at the at the bottom of that thing, uh, every day, I think this is what's really important, too, is I think you have to touch base with your people. All right. Constantly. Um, and, 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 and that's where at the bottom of my practice plan every day, I, I, I write three players names at the bottom. Um, and you know, it might be somebody that had an issue that I got to deal with. Um, but it might not be. Um, and I try to keep a plan. So I have over the course of a week, I get an individual saying, and one guy is right after practice. As soon as we break our huddle, all right, I grab him and we just talk for a second. Okay. Um, and then the next one is going to be, um, he's going to come up, uh, right before he does his recovery in the training room. And then the other one's going to come up after his recovery on the way out. So I'm purposeful for making sure that I'm meeting individually with, with everybody on, on, on my team, um, as we go through that. But I, I think it's so important to be able to plan and then reflect on that plan, um, after you do it. Cause there's a ton of failure in a practice and, in my practice, I also have on the side, I have alternative drills. Like, let's say we get, you know, a couple guys get banged up. I go into practice, I only got 12 healthy guys. Two guys get banged up, and now I can't go to a five-on-five -five drill. I got to go to a four-on-four or three-on-three drill. I'm prepared. Like, don't let the worst thing happen. You don't have a plan. Um, I think that's really important, being successful. Well, I think one of the things that I learned when I was there is, you know, the the body has limits. I heard this from Colin Henderson, who's a great, great um, – mind coach here, but the body has limits, but the mind is limitless. Like, I don't think most people really understand how hard they can work. Like everybody has another gear. Everybody has another level. And I learned that through repetitive practice. I learned that through, you know, getting pushed in our, in our sprints, you know, in our, in our preseason conditioning. And so what you're saying is, you know, I, again, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest here and I'm going to say, just listening to you. I'm learning, I'm a student of the game right now. I'm learning right now saying, am I as detailed, like on a Sunday night when I'm playing in my week, am I as detailed? as what you are showing up to your practice. You know, how can I get the most out of my team? How can I get the most out of myself and my schedule and the efficiencies, you know, back to, you know, a limited budget and the most amount of wins. I think there's so many people right now, if, if you take a look, a hard look at your preparation, you know, one of the things I heard was amateurs get paid to play and professionals get paid to practice. And practice is really where, you know, growth happens. Practice is really when the separation happens. So I, I again, I, I have questions, but I don't, I don't need to ask any questions because what you're doing is you're helping a lot of people right now understand how important that preparation is. So, and I'll even talk about like, cause it's so recruiting calls, you mm -hmm. know, we're constantly, and we're recruiting two to three classes at one time. Um, and, you know, I talked about, Hey, you gotta be intentional. You gotta have these eight things you're doing every day. Well, what happens is so many times, like you just run out of time. And so you're just checking boxes. And so you're calling and I can't tell you how many times, you know, doors are open. I'm hearing, you know, somebody on the staff and I'll find myself even doing it where I'll say like, Hey, just, you know, Joe Smith, just calling to check in. Well, everybody's doing that. Like y there are other great people at their jobs that you're competing against. And as soon as you say checking in, you're just checking a box and you're wasting their time and your time and you're not separating yourself. You got to be intentional. So you're differentiating yourself as you're selling your program and you're recruiting people. And so what I've challenged our people is every time you're making that call to their parent or the player, you need to be intentional with what is your message you're going to get across. Okay. And most successful conversations are ones where you get them talking, you know, and I can't tell you how many times, like, I'm going to get off this podcast and I'm going to be like, man, that was a great podcast. Guess why? Because you forced me to talk and I'm going to walk out. I like hearing myself talk. I'm going to be like, man, I had a, I had a killer podcast, you know, and, and, and I think inspiring guys to do that. And so I try to lead players into, you know, questions and hear what they want to, what they're looking for. And then I feed them about our program with how they're telling me that. 
And so I go into every recruiting call with a purpose I want to get out. Now, I may have to, you know, uh, uh, pivot as I get to that point, but I'm listening and then I'm giving them about our program in, in, in what they want, want to hear. Um, and I think that's, that's really important is, you know, every phone call, man, that's, that's an opportunity to sell yourself, sell your program, sell your company. And don't just go in without a plan because you're going to find yourself, you know, stepping in stuff in your yard. Well, it's, it's being, right? it's being intentional. One of the things as far as being intentional, um, you know, I, I try to dive a little deeper with the words that I'm using and, and, um, I still do, but, but, uh, one of the words that I tried to stop using was just. I just wanted to check in with you. I was just thinking about you. If I said, if I said, Hey coach, I was just thinking about you. If I turned that around and I said, coach, I've been thinking about you and I wanted to see how you're doing like that. That is just that change in getting that word out makes my conversation with you more intentional. And I think, you know, I'm going to get off this podcast too, and I'm going to make some calls to my clients and I'm going to be intentional because you're, you're reminding me how important that is. People, people want to know that you're, th you're there to solve a problem. We tell our team, the only reason a business exists is to solve a problem. Like we exist so that we can help people save time, reduce their stress and help them keep as much money in their pocket as possible. We don't sell homes because people use us because we're number one or we have the best team. You know, you, You've beat Indiana multiple times and, and guys probably aren't coming there because you beat Indiana. That's great for your resume, but they're coming there because of how you make them feel, how you make their parents feel. The problem you're solving is you're showing them that they can grow, develop as a, as a young man, a young student athlete on campus. And then the result that's going to happen from that, you know, that's the problem you're solving. So um, let's, let's get into a little bit. I know I brought up Indiana. Let's talk about some of your wins. What are, what are some of the wins that you've had, um, since you've been there and it doesn't need to be a, a win in a game, but what are some of the wins that you have in your career? Well, uh, I mean, probably the, the, the biggest win is, is that, you know, I've, I've been here through four different contracts for 12 years. Um, I got my first division one head coaching opportunity, um, and we've had successful at it. Uh, we've been successful at it. I mean, my wife is, you know, a 20 year veteran of coaching and, and, you know, my, my kids are, are slotted to be able to go to elementary school, middle school and high school all while their dad is a division one head coach. And that's unheard I, of, that, by the way, it, it, it's it. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to see the numbers on that. I don't know how you find those stats out, but that opportunity is, is hard. So there's, there's success in that. Um, you know, the other success is that, you know, when you, you know, the generations that I've been able to coach here and then, you know, and watching them succeed in life, like that, that's a win for me. Um, you know, I just had Mo Evans who graduated in 2017. Um, he popped by campus and he's, he's, he's got his second child on the way and he's trying to move from, from, uh, Grand Rapids down to either Indy or Fort Wayne, get a little closer to family. Um, and uh, and I had actually gotten a call from Mike Calder, who was also on his team, um, that 2016 first championship team in the Summit League. And and so I put out this text line, say, hey, who wants to come to campus? I got Max Landis coming in here. His son's coming to camp. You were coming in. Dave Simon was coming in. Um, and Mo said, yeah, I'll come up. I want to see you guys. So Mo comes up. And while he's there, we're talking about, um, you know, what he wants to do with his career. And, and he, you know, he wants to be a college coach or at least in player development. And I'm thinking, well, how do we get you there with the next phase? And so then next thing I know is I, I, I get him set up with, uh, with our, our training facility in town, which I think is a great, you know, OPS where your, your, your kids train as well. I, I thought that was awesome. And so he, uh, you know, on that moment, got him an interview with that. He also said he'd just gotten trained to, uh, be a high school referee. Um, just wanted to give back to the game a little bit. I made a phone call and I got him in a training camp to be a big 10 referee uh, that next weekend. Now, whether he ends up going that route or not, but you know, opportunities. And like, I love when I get to have conversations and use my relationships to help other people. Um, and that, that, that's a, that's a huge win. Um, and then, you know, just you ask me to be on this podcast. Um, that's cool. We built a relationship. Um, you've helped me a ton, um, and, and, and connecting with, 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 uh, with the people in this community. I think you're an unreal connector 
in this in this community and and you know to be able to share my message i think that's awesome those those are really the wins i mean you know we won a lot of games last year i became the winningest coach in in pretty full Wayne history um division one and 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 uh all all levels and and that's really really cool that's kept me here um but it's more the relationships and being an active member of the community that's that that's really been probably my biggest win that's that's awesome i mean i remember um my family had a saying that uh coaches either retire or get fired and uh you know you kind you kind of know what the end looks like um but but this podcast is designed to help people understand that in the game of life relationships win. And, you know, when my dad was let go and fired, you know, we, we weren't coming to games and, you know, it's, it's uh it was a touchy subject at the time, but you know, you and, and coach Jassic really did a great job of reaching back out and saying, you know, I want to, I want this alumni to be strong. And it's something that I've just found, you know, a passion in and, and helping however I can in the program. So as we move forward, you know, there's, there's some challenges, but there's some, there's some neat things. And, um, you know, I want to ask you one more question. Uh, you, you said something about um, about fans, fan, fan. Uh... Oh, well, and let me let me back up. I think because this is important. Like talking about your father, yeah. um, you know, who was the first Division One coach in, in in history here in the transformation. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going from Division Two to Division One. You're part of those those teams, um, and like it was it was a challenge. Didn't have a league. You're an independent. You're going on the road for probably 70% of your games to fund the transformation. You were playing eight, nine, 10 buy games. Those are power five games where they're paying you money not to come, come back to your place. You know, you're on the road all the time and, and funding, you know, the rest of the athletic part. And that, that, that was a challenge and got beat up doing that. Um, but that was important to the development of our program. And I've recognized Um, And I tried when I became the head coach to pull your dad back in, recognizing that, you know, hey, you know, wins and losses like, yeah, there were probably some failure there in the losses that happened, but he was set up for failure, but for long term growth. And he, he, he was a big part of where we are today. And if you can create that environment, no matter, you know, whenever you take over a, a, a company, if you can recognize the past generations and their successes that have helped you to position yourself to be successful. I think that can really build your brand. That can build people on your team. Like, why would you ever have to say anything negative about anybody else? Like if you just, just raise them up and, and, and guess what? Now you got a bigger team and your dad has done a phenomenal job, you know, supporting our growth and tying in those old alums and, and, and really building it up. And then, you know, Dane Fife took over and same thing with Dane. We, we still, so in 2005, when he took over, he created a creed, all right, where he put your hands in right before practice to this practice. I promise to, I promise to dedicate my heart, my mind, my soul, and goes through this whole creed. They says, well, that went to Tony Jassic as the head coach. And I was an assistant there and I was in the conversation. Do we keep it? Okay. Now he was saying it every day because he was an assistant for Dane for eight years. And I was like, absolutely. Let's tie ourselves to those past generations. And then I became the head coach. I've kept it. And then Dane was doing our TV game at Oakland, you know, this last year. So in 2023, and we brought him into the middle and, and we said his creed and the smile on his face was awesome. Um, from just knowing like, hey, we've had all the success. We won two league titles, beat Indiana in back-to-back years, beat them in Bloomington by 20, all the success. Um, and it, it, it really, he, he he was part of that. I think that's that's cool when you do. That's a, all right, so fan yeah, rate, yeah. Um, I think that's part of it. Um, you know, and, and that's where I think, you know, everything goes into fan raising. Um, you know, my recruiting, well, when I – created our style of play, you know, it was recruiting and also fan raising. You know, what, what do you think of when you watch us play, Brad? Uh, I love how you get up and down the floor. I love how you share the ball. Um, I learned about paint touch shots from you guys. I I learned, (laughs) I learned that your team is going to be intentional with the way you play. um, And, and all the guys show up, you know, there's not a guy on the floor that's not going hard. I don't see anybody taking plays off. And, and, and that, that part of playing hard, like that's awesome. And, and, and a lot of people are trying to do that. And how do you inspire that? That's a whole nother deeper talk. But how we play the game is 
taking over, knowing that we're a young Division One program. We're trying to build excitement in a great growing city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people in our city, I mean, even at our Indiana win in front of 12,000 people, you saw a lot of red there. You know, in, in our, you know, there's a lot of Indian fans, Purdue fans, Notre Dame fans, but they live in our city. They, uh, you know, I want them to be Fort Wayne fans, you know, and they know they need our university to be successful, to be, you know, and so I said, how do I get them on board? Well, create an exciting style of play. We shoot the three, you know, and I've defined, all right, you know, you cannot play in our program unless you shoot the three. OK, so I, I, I have direction. I give my staff direction. So when they go out there and so as you're recruiting and you're like you got to define what you're looking for so that they fit. Here are your standards that uh, a starting point. So it's not just all people. Well, mine is you guys shoot the three. OK, then for our style, we shoot the three for space. But then we want to play really, really fast. We want to score the basketball. OK, we try to create a sexy style of play. You know, I'm not a very sexy coach. Right. So uh, uh, you got to you got to figure out a way. Although Lambert, who gives me my suits, he sets me up. You guys are trying to make me look good. But I create a style of play that people want to watch to try and bring people into the program that has fun around it, scoring the basketball. And then that's also a style that I can sell as I'm a young program. I mean, we've you know, we changed our brand from. IPFW to Purdue Fort Wayne. I mean, that's a challenge in itself. Um, and and so as we're going through all these growths, the staple is that how we're going to play. And like, I can sell a style that players like to play. Um, I think that's fan raising. The other piece is everything we do is how do you, you know, engage with our community from, you know, your your daughter and son were at, at our camp last week. Um, you know, we don't make a ton of money on the camp because we're, you know, we're donating. I think 50 of them we gave, uh, you know, we had 200 campers, 50 of them we donated to Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, trying to reach out to underprivileged. OK, we also try and keep the cost down so we have more people coming in. I mean, it's really taxing on families, you know, to, you got a lot of things you got to do. Um, but, hey, how do we create an environment where we get young people into our program? I love young people. Our players are really good. How do they connect to so our summer camps? Then we had 105 teams come to our team camp. Um, well, that was, again, we try to keep the cost on get players and coaches on our program. They may have, you know, how do we get them involved? How do we connect with as many people as possible? You know, over four days, 105 teams, coaches, they may not have players for us right now, but those guys are going to connect us with the player, you know, maybe in the future. So I think as you look at fan raising and fundraising, as you have conversations, you know, they may not, you know, they may not be capable of helping you right now, but if everything is transactional and you're only talking to the person that's going to help you right now, people feel that you got to be genuine. They, they, abso and, they absolutely do. I want to, I want to say something though, because, you know, something you said about this creed, you know, if, if businesses would, say a creed before every meeting, how good would those meetings be? You know, if, if they talked about, Hey, I want to help other people succeed, you know, in, in our world in, in real estate, you know, it's kind of eat what you kill. And in order to build a team, it's, it's very difficult because everybody's out for themselves. You know, I want to grow my business 10%. I want to grow, I want to make more money, but, but the intentionality of how can I help my staff win? You know, everybody, you know, if, if you work hard and you do a great job, you deserve a pay raise. Well, the only way to do that is if everybody shows up and, and is collective together and, and working for the same goal. Um, we're about running out of time, but I want to land on a couple things here. Um, I, I love our conversation about how some of the challenges you experience, how you show up to practice the detail, you know, uh, successes in the details and in the preparation. I love talking about recruiting because I think other businesses, you know, have the same thing. Um, you know, how do you continue to retain people? How do you go after and recruit new people? Um, but let's talk about some of the challenges on the, on the landscape right now with uh, college basketball, men's basketball right now with NIL name, image, and likeness. Um, let's talk about how people, let's talk about one, what is it? And two, how can people help, you know, how can the listeners help you out right now? Well, um, college basketball, college sports, um, it's a, it's a transformation. And I think this is, you know, it's like every business, you're going to constantly get hit with moments that you have to pivot and you, you, you can either fight it and complain, um, and talk about, you know, what you can't do, but that's never going to help you. You've got to recognize, you know, all right, every time there's change, it's it's an opportunity. And can you pivot 
better than other people and come up with a game plan to take up space. Because every time you change, there's new space there. And and you're either going to give up space or take up that space. And so, you know, I've tried to be, like I've said over and over in this podcast, be intentional with that. And so I also was very slow moving in, and, and this is going into the NIL, so name, image, likeness. For those that still don't understand name, image, and likeness, it's it's paying players at at, the, at a very you know basic level. But um, I'll just share my experience for a second. So when we went Division One, we made the transition to Division One. You know, our athletes, our, our team was allowed to stay on campus. Well, guess what? Our coaches did force us to stay on campus. Well, guess what? We all needed to do is go get summer jobs. Well, guess what? We didn't have time for summer jobs because we had three practices, two practices, you know, and then uh, open gym in the evenings. And so as a college kid, you know, yeah, there's there's scholarships available, which which is great, but you know, all the athletes earn those, you know, you earn those by putting in all the work, all the blood, sweat and tears, you know, will get you that, but you're broke, you're on campus. And what you're doing is you are allowing your guys to meet community leaders, help Fort Wayne grow. And then ultimately what that's going to do. So a guy like me, I'm going to get excited about being alumni of what you're building. I love that you said you're trying to help your guys get their second job right out of college versus their first because you're giving them the life skills. So that's fantastic. Um, I know there's a lot of things that, you know, we could go down this road and and talk about the transfer portal and and March Madness and making the tournament. But um, I just want to commend you. Thank you for doing work that matters. Thank you for being Fort Wayne's basketball team. Thank you for the leadership you give your staff and your team because I see it. You know, they're they're great great guys you know the the autographs and the handshakes and the high fives and the pictures that they take with my kids um you know you're you're building a legacy here and so i just want to say thank you for for being a part of that well brad i appreciate you having me on it was great reflection um i got through probably a page of my six pages <laughs> of notes i put together um it's it, it great for me you know to put our ideas and, and understand you know uh, you know who we are and make sure i'm on track for who i want to be i mean we we graduated 4,000 point scores, our all time leading score just worked out with the Hawks last week. Um, and, and an elite rebound. I mean, five dudes that really have won a ton of games, won our first rise league. And now we got newcomers and making sure that, that we're developing them, um, you know, really, really well is, is, is good for me. I'm going to answer this for you, but if you want to, uh, <laughs> add to it, um, how can the listeners help you out? Okay. So we have Don's for Fort Wayne, which is our, our new collective. They can go to that website. They can donate. So Don's for Fort Wayne's a new collective NIL, uh, get on board. It's a great, great, uh, product here in Fort Wayne, uh, buy season tickets. You know, people can come support your team. It's, it's a, like I said, it's a great product here in Fort Wayne. Um, how else, how else can listeners help you out? Um, you know, if you're, if you're in Fort Wayne, um, casino night, first Saturday in November every year, this year it's November 4th. Um, it's turned into, I mean, we had 500 people there last year. It's, it's, it's awesome. Great, great evening in Fort Wayne. Um, you know, we, we, we have a huge auction. Um, it's 25 years of being in sports and those relationships, um, have created great experiences from, you know, Indy 500, Churchill Downs, uh, US Open, things like that. Um, you know, that helps support our program. And that's, you know, been a big part of our success as a community has embraced us. Um, from that standpoint. So, you know, the, the NIL collective, um, casino night, uh, fan raising. And then, you know, what inspires me is when people reach out. And so my, my email address is, uh, uh, Kaufman J, uh, at pfw.edu. Um, if you have questions or want my notes that I, I got through about a page of this or want to talk about the culture of your organization, um, maybe you're a basketball coach. You want to talk a little hoops. I mean, I, I, I love that. I share. Um, I, I, I don't think we share enough. And so I think this is really cool that you're having me on. And, and my, my Twitter at Coach Kaufman, um, you know, I think following that, you kind of see what we're doing on a daily basis, build relationships in our, in our program. And we're a big part of, you know, life skills is huge with us. And maybe you live outside of Fort Wayne and you want to do an educational piece with our players. Um, you know, our also, I mean, our players in the summers, they're doing ballroom dancing, dining etiquette that we do three golf lessons, you know, trying to help them become leaders of men and, and become leaders in their community when they get done with basketball and, and give back to our community while they're here, um, and get them comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, you know, we, we've had people you know, speak to us about, you know, insurance, about uh, investing, about, you know, personal branding um, and networking. I mean, I, I'd love to have people do Zooms with our program. So, 
Um, just connecting with people is, is, is awesome. We play all over the country. You want to come to a Don's game, uh, hit me on Twitter, send me an email, and we'd love to have you come and be a part of it. Come to the shoot around before. Um, you may even get to sit on the bench. We'll offer that up at our casino night too. That's fantastic. Um, last question I have for you. So it, we believe in the game of life relationships win. And the kids these days talk about, you know, give them their flowers, which means appreciation, you know, send them some respect. Who is, who is one person in your life that you want to send some flowers to that has, you know, shaped you into who you are today and, and helped you get to where you are? Well, uh, when you, I don't know if this is something to bring up to your, your staff all the time. Um, it comes from our, our sports psych. Um, who sits on my bench really helps me manage our, our, our play from mental performance and also, um, you know, mental health. Um, you cannot be stressed and appreciative at the same time. Your mind can't, can't do it. Um, and we all are caught in a lot of stresses. Life is busy. It's complicated. It's stressful. Um, and so, you know, having these moments of, of appreciation are, are, are huge. Um, I've been very blessed with a lot of people that have impacted my life. Um, you know, from, from my, my mom and dad, uh, you know, to the coaches. I mean, Coach Bell, my high school coach, Bob Johnson, uh, my first coach I worked for um, in college, those two, uh, other than my mom and dad, have impacted my life more than anybody else. Um, and, and the person that unfortunately gets forgotten a lot as I tell my story uh, is my wife, Tracy Kaufman. Um, and, you know, I talked earlier in the podcast about, you know, my, my core values. Um, I tried to come up with words uh, that were, you know, better or different than hers, and I and I couldn't. Um, she's my cliff notes. Um, I get caught up planning while I'm in it. I mean, you know, our guys are on campus 11 months out of the year. Um, she she I, I love reading, but she gets to finish the books more, and she's constantly figuring out things for me and addressing it. My quality control, um, and also keeps me really grounded um, because. You know, my, my, my two kids did not choose, like they, they, they did not choose for me to be a division one basketball coach. Um, you know, and, and, and they get a lot of benefits from that. Um, you know, they sat courtside at the final four of the last two years. I mean, 72,000 people had worse seats than us. Um, but that's just one day and you got 300, you know, 64 other days. And, and, and what, how are you, uh, a dad? And, and my wife really helps me manage and balance that and keeps me on track and it's phenomenal. And it, it is, uh, you know, we're in, in this, in this, you know, journey together. Um, and it's really cool because she's a college coach too, and we really complement each other. Um, and so, no, I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to, to give her a shout out. Awesome. So Tracy, if you're listening, uh, we just sent you some flowers. So coach, thanks for being on today. This has been a pleasure. Uh, selfishly, this is so much fun to talk about what you're doing at, at Purdue Fort Wayne with the men's basketball, but I really hope the listeners heard a lot of the, the, the business ideas, the, the things that you're doing, the preparation, the accountability, the life skills, you know, knowing that being a part of something bigger than yourself is, is really what's most important. So it's, it's uh, no wonder why you're having some success. Keep it up. Best of luck to you and uh, go Dons. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me. Go Dons.